If you're watching this, it probably means you're getting some more corporate work and live audio. A great entry point is the role of an A2. So if you're new to this type of language, I want to walk you through an A1 versus an A2. Then I've got 25 pro tips from my 10 year career so far in corporate audio, uh, doing shows for the president, some of the world's biggest companies in some really high pressure situations. I want to make sure you feel comfortable stepping into this because if you're used to rock and roll, uh, it's, it's just a different feel. Uh, I, I, it is a lot of fun. It's, it's way different, but I think you're really going to enjoy it and, and, and be up to the challenge. I want to help make sure that you succeed succeed. So an A1 in corporate world is usually behind the console. They're mixing the house and then sometimes also the broadcast feed or stream feed as well with a couple other destinations, maybe an overflow room or the lobby, basically what everyone hears. Then the other counterpart to that is the A2, who's usually managing wireless, comm, patching, sometimes stage managing. So point number one is when someone says, hey, do you want an A2 for this show? Clarify what in the world A2 means because I'm going to walk you through my own experience of what it means in the most of the shows I'm on. But in different parts of the world or different parts of the country, that role may look a little bit different and have different types of responsibilities. So just know I'm, I'm that's how I'm filtering everything through. So when I'm a two for the show, depending on the size, show, scope, uh, and size of it, Sometimes I'm just primarily working on wireless and working with the presenters. Sometimes I'm helping them talk through the stage moves. A lot of times I'm setting up comm as well. So just make sure and ask your production manager when you get booked for a show, hey, what does this mean when you're working with them? And then every A1 you're going to work with has a little bit different expectations of what the A2 is going to do with them. So first, start with communication. Number two, I want you to treat the stage like your living room. And this is especially if you do not have a stage manager. So a stage manager is usually responsible for wrangling talent, AKA the presenters on the stage. Uh, Maybe it's the band or just the keynote or whatever. And they're making sure people coming come onto the stage in a timely fashion and they're in the right order, they feel prepared. So if you don't have that, that is you. So you need to make sure when you're miking up presenters, which is usually part of the job as an A2, you're like, hey, this is the stage entrance. You're going to go to the center stage. Your PowerPoint is on the DSM or downstage monitor in front of you, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a second. <clears throat> you, making them feel comfortable that they can speak naturally. And this is really helpful, especially if you don't have a rehearsal because they're flying in blind. They, the presenter may have not been in here. So help them feel comfortable is your job as the A2. Ask them if they want any water. Uh, I usually like to have a water bottle and remove any labeling with my knife. So it's just a clear water uh, because sometimes I work retail and I don't want someone who's in charge of the Dasani account thinking about the Ozarka bottle I just handed them. So make it clear so they don't have to think. There's usually some fullback monitors that are downstage that have video roles and any dialogue for Q&A or uh, maybe a Zoom presenter who they're talking back and forth with. So make sure they're aware of those so they can hear and work with your A1 to test those. So number two is treat the stage like your living room, own it, especially if you do not have a stage manager. Number three is get a face sheet. This is a piece of paper with all the presenters you're going to be working with, with maybe their LinkedIn profile pic right under it. Because again, if you're the stage manager and managing talent, sometimes the PM or the client is running around and you're like, hey, I need to get John Smith mic'd up. What does he look like? Uh, and so you need to be able to look at this face sheet and recognize them. And maybe they're walking backstage looking like a lost sheep. You'd be like, hey, John, let's get you mic'd up. Uh, work with your A1 to figure out what mic they need to be on and get them mic'd up. Number four, don't be afraid to fix something, but be inconspicuous if you can. So a common thing that might happen is the presenter's talking, make a really big point, and they their hand comes across their shirt and knocks their lav off. They may be they may not know it happened. They may be aware but not know how to fix it. So I maybe give them a second, realize what's going on, but don't be afraid to run up there and pin it back on their shirt, confidently walk off, and you'll look like a hero. Some A2s are, are too scared of being seen. And the other side is that they might be a little bit too active. We want to be inconspicuous if you can. So if it's not something that doesn't have to be solved right this second, maybe there's a video roll coming up where the stage lights are going to come down, everyone's attention around the screens, and they can run out and fix it. So maybe a presenter, when they were, uh, sometimes they bring their computers and set it down on the stage and plug in an HDMI and audio cable for their presenters. This is great if they're doing rapid fire, so they just set it down, plug in, and go. Maybe the last presenter accidentally uh, kicked the data video converter off the stage and they can't get to it, but there's going to be video. So wait till the video roll is, confidently walk out, 
put the converter back on stage, get it ready for the next presenter, help them get it plugged in and get out of Dodge. Your show caller or your production manager will give you a TRT or total runtime on the video, let you know like, hey, we got 90 seconds of cover, move, 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 <laughs> make it quick. Uh, so if you can use cover, something like video rolls or maybe even a walk-on uh, segment where there's other action happening to draw less attention. But again, if there's something that you can fix and it would make it a lot make the show a lot better to be able to do it quickly. Just move confidently, make it happen. Uh, number five is help video world spot what's on the downstage monitors. So oftentimes there's up to maybe three or four basically TVs or monitors in front of the stage for the presenters to be able to see their notes, their PowerPoint, maybe a Zoom presenter, or even what's currently going to program. So video world is going to be responsible for routing all of that. But oftentimes they don't have a spy camera or a source that's able to see what's happening on the stage, and you often are looking at the stage, so if you have the production channel on your comm, which you should, you usually have the production channel and your audio channel, be a bro for, or a broette for Video World. And so you can help them spot what's going on, because sometimes they're building presets to figure it out. So if they go to a preset and like, hey, it's just black in the downstage monitors, help spot that for them and be helpful in that way. Number six is beware of console queens. So uh, uh, I worked with a new A2 uh, named Lele out of Hawaii. So shout out to him. He was phenomenal. Uh, I was in the broadcast truck and worked with the in-room A1 and he was our A2. Did a wonderful job. Uh, but he, what was really cool is uh, me and, and Nick, the A1, were helping set up. And he looked at us and he said, man, you guys are A1s that actually work. And I was like, kind of taken aback by that. It was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, a lot of A1s I work with, they just sit behind the console and just dink around. They don't really do anything. They're not running cables. Basically, they get the PA in the air and then disappear. So, um, so number one, if you're an A1, work and help the whole audio department get there. I understand there's divisions of labor, uh, but if you're an A2 and you're running into that, just know that sometimes that is the norm, unfortunately. So don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it, whether that's wrangling more hands or ask your A1. Uh, and again, back to point number one, create clarity in what is the A2 specifically responsible for and make sure that gets done, but beware of console queens. Number seven, moving into some wireless, make sure and power lock them. So this is a feature, uh, I'm very familiar with the ULXD from Sure or the Axient, that on the pack you can go into the settings and actually lock it to where even if they flip the switch to off, it doesn't turn off. Because some presenters like to do you a favor and turn on and off their packs, but by default I have them all power locked. I just tell them like, hey, when you walk on stage, you're gonna be able to be heard. And that means the A1 is gonna bring up the fader. So again, communication with your A1, just so you don't have to worry about it. Cause you don't wanna walk up and the presenter thinks they have it on, but they flip it off and then you can't hear and it's awkward. So I power lock all my wireless by default. Uh, just a couple of bonus settings. I usually have the mic offset or the pad at zero, none of that. I have the gain at zero, so it just have plenty of headroom on it. Uh, my default transmit strength is 10 milliwatts. If it's in a really rough area or you need more or the segment is very short, I'll up it higher. Uh, I usually don't go down to one milliwatt. Again, this is all sure wireless standards. I don't use Sennheiser very much, so you can help translate there. Number eight is test your wireless for the worst case. So you, if you're using Sure Wireless, you can use Wireless Workbench. So have that up and on the network and there's a monitor tab. So you can go over to that. Uh, and when you have your wireless ready, after you set up your antennas and you're going, you can actually hit that little monitor tab and walk around then see your RF strength and levels throughout the area. Because you might have a very active presenter who's gonna go all over the room. So be ready for that. What if they um, have the body pack on the opposite side of the antenna if they really want it over there? Uh, and again, another bonus tip, I would put the body pack on the side of the presenter that's closest to your antenna. So I would try to have it to where your antennas are in the center and up high and pointed down. So no matter what side they're on, it can help get more uh, line of sight to the pack. But always test worst case at your default transmit strength and walk around and look at it. So if you are getting drops in that graph in the monitor section, then you need to make a change. Number nine, coordinate at least one backup channel per frequency. So if something happens, there's a TV crew that comes in or some uh, you know, local news station that fires up their wireless starts stepping on you, you can quickly get the pack, reallocate and send it back out. So always keep an eye on your RF levels throughout the show as well. If you're using Axiant Show Link, you can actually just click a button within the software and it'll push the new frequency to the pack, which is pretty cool. Number 10, charge your wireless on lunch breaks and at the end of the day. Sometimes if you're especially getting rentals, a lot of them don't come with 
rechargeable batteries. It's just a bunch of alkaline which is fine. So just allocate and look at your battery strength, but it's rechargeable out the gate. When they're new, you usually get eight to 10 hours of life. But if you have an early call, you have a morning segment, there's lunch and afternoon session, maybe a Q and A at the end of the day, you need to be able to do both. So anytime there's a substantial break, maybe up to an hour, I'm grabbing all the wireless, putting all my batteries back in the charger, just so they're good. I would always keep a couple of handhelds live just in case they need to make an announcement during lunch. Uh, or something like that, uh, or, a pre- or a presenter wants to rehearse. And so just hopefully you have more batteries than wireless channels, but that's not always the case. So be ready for a few and know when to rotate them out and cycle them if you need it. Number 11, check RF each new show day. It's tempting, let's say if you have a setup day, two show days, and then you strike, you do everything on setup day, you have a rehearsal, everything looks good. And the next morning you waltz in, you fire them all up, you see meters and okay, cool, you're ready for the show. But things change. <laughs> so maybe the A1 recalled the wrong console file, the Dante patching is differently, or the RF environment's looking different that day. So every single morning, because usually the shows are starting in the morning, I'll work with the A1, you know, 30 minutes before doors or whatever, and be like, hey, can we rattle through the wireless? And that just means me backstage saying, hey, love one, love one, love one. They put it in the house, get it all the way through the PA, make sure it's getting there. Great. It's not enough just to see meters. I, under- I understand sometimes you don't have a uh, the environment able to put it through all the way through the PA, but at least have your A1 PF fella at the house uh, or uh, at front of house. So check them each new show day. Number 12, if you're miking someone with a lapel or a lav um, and they're maybe they're on a panel, always ask, well, hey, where's the moderator going to be? Because if you have like one, two, three people and the moderator's right here, this person and this person, I'll put their lavs on this side. So they're speaking across their body to the moderator uh, ideally I put it in the center. Maybe you could clip it on a tie, but some people just have jackets and you can't put it in the center. So pick the side they're going to be speaking across so you can get uh, more game before feedback and higher level versus the room. Number 13, keep conversation going while you love. Sometimes it's just an awkward thing. Like, Hey, I'm going to take this cable and run it down your shirt. Um, and depending what people are wearing, it could just get kind of weird. So just make people comfortable. I like to talk, think about when you're at the doctor's office. Um, the, I, th- I feel like the good doctors are number one, good at their job. And number two, just make you feel comfortable, have a good bedside manner. And that's what you are as an A2. You're making them feel comfortable on stage, comfortable in this environment, especially if they're not used to working with you. So have good bedside manners. Keep conversation going, explain what you're doing is great, especially with newer presenters. Number 14 is use a lav bullet. So this uh, actually lost mine. I have another one on order, but it's actually, it looks like a little fishing lure weight, a fishing weight that you put on the end of the lav and you put it and it helps have a weight and drop down to the end. Just so you don't have to spend as much time kind of to reach up and fish it all out. That's a, it's a really useful tool. Um, it's kind of like the word Kleenex is just generic for facial tissue, but a lot of bullet. Uh, I like the Rode mic drop uh, because the bullet going through TSA, it literally looks like a bullet that can, and it just, you, you get a lot of weird looks and it's just not good. So I like the Rode mic drop that looks a little bit more just like a, a silver uh, kind of like semicircle piece of metal. Number 15, have a spare or backup wireless comm set for the client or your producer. So again, another one of your roles as an A2 is managing comm. So you hopefully can ask for a comm plan from like, hey, what are all the positions that need comm? Is it wired or is it wireless? What units are we using? Um, So you need to be able to communicate and see like, hey, everyone's got this. Do we have any spares and have them ready and live just in case like, hey, we got Dan in from marketing. He wants to be able to talk to the crew as we're going through somebody's slides. Can we get that to them? So you want to be able to say yes, have the extra ready. And then as a little bonus tip here, one of the most important comm sets is the show caller. So this is the person or production manager if they're doing this, but they are talking the entire crew, this play-by-play for the entire show. Everyone needs to hear that person. So if that comm fails, what are you going to do? So I like to have a backup comm set for the show caller just in case something happens. And let's say you don't have enough to do that, or maybe you're just all on wired RTS and here, that's what we're going to do. Like, okay, we're all going to be able to hop on a FaceTime audio call, or even just a phone call just to make sure you can still talk to each other. Like, okay, we have these pair of earbuds and gonna make sure what's happened. Cause again, it's vital that they are able to talk to the whole crew. So have a backup plan if that's the case. Number 16, we're going to integrating different 
comm systems together, maybe a wired RTS system with a wireless FreeSpeak 2 system uh, from ClearCom. Um, that's an, a system I often have to put together. Uh, match levels and gain structure. They have uh, they interface between each other and the gain structure is often different. So within the software, you can poke around. So all that being said, that the higher level thing you need to think about is how can I match levels and make everyone who's talking on the system sound consistent um, both from a, a tonality standpoint and a level standpoint. You can't always control tonality. It's not like you have an EQ on every mic, but make sure the level is consistent even when you have differing systems talk to each other. Number 17, RG8X cable, that's 50 ohm coax cable that's commonly used in RF, is about 234 times more effective than air, with a caveat at 540 megahertz. So that was a lot of math I just threw at you. But right in the middle of our range of frequencies we can choose for a lot of wireless is about 500 or 540 megahertz. And it's uh, efficiency broadcasting through air and cable is determined by that frequency, so let's go with that. Uh, but from my calculations, 100 feet or 31 meters of air, you get about 57 dB of air loss. So how do we know that? So I can go here to this uh, RF microphone link budget. This is actually a bunch of calculations I got from Steven Pavlik, who's a great RF guy. And I put that in here. So I can also go here to this RF line loss chart, which is here. And I can look at my the cable I'm using and the transmit frequency. And this is per 100 feet. And I can also look at this coax calculator. So I have links to the description here, or you can just get my audio mass survival spreadsheet, and this will have the links right here. But this is how I use to calculate this. So if you're an RF expert, please fact check me here. Uh, but from these calculations, I found that 100 feet of air, you get 57 dB of loss, which is a lot. It's almost a thousand times of loss when you have to go 100 feet. Again, that's a, that's a long distance. But for 100 feet of RG8X cable, you only get about 9.34, or let's just round to 10 dB of loss. So that's 234 times less loss. Remember, this is the decibel scale, so we're not just comparing 10 to 60. Um, so basically, you could put two school buses end to end, which is about 72 feet or 22 meters, and that's better than one foot of cable. So two school buses worth of cable is better than one foot of air. Again, this is all dependent on the transmit frequency, but the point I wanted to make is if someone ships you an RF unit and you're not having to go very far, but you have a hundred foot cable, it's tempting to be like, ah, let me just use this little 10 foot jumper and it'll throw to the stage and I'll be fine. No, use the hundred foot cable, still get it close to the stage. That's gonna be better. Again, it's, it's about 234 times better. Please fact check me here. This is just from my research on this website in the link budget. Uh, but cable is way better than air, <laughs> bottom line. Number 18, get your antennas up high and away from metal objects, specifically your RF antennas, but still get them close to the stage. And same thing with your comm antennas, plan out your zones. So if you've got a FreeSpeak 2 system, it's got two antenna um, RJ45 or fiber connections. And so I often will place mine in video world or backstage and put another one at front of house because you have wireless people on wireless walking throughout. So, so bottom line, anywhere someone needs to walk and talk to people, make sure there's an antenna there for comm. And then for the stage, prioritize your antenna placement to get it center stage and up high and pointed at the stage. But oftentimes video world puts a big giant LED wall behind that, which will <laughs> produce a lot of electromagnetic a magnetic interference. So get line of sight. If you need to get it off to the stage, you can even mount it to like a, 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 a bigger stand or a C stand or something like that, or even a pole for pipe and drape to get it up high, but get line of sight, get it close to the presenters. I wouldn't get any closer than about 15 feet, but have that antenna pointed there. This is true for a helical antenna as well as an LPDA or shark fin. Uh, point them at what you want to pick up. Number 19, make sure to communicate your mic naming with your A1. So you got 12 channels of wireless. You might have eight laws, four handhelds. And on my desk as an A1, I just label them RF 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And once they're flipped over to be dedicated to a law or handheld, I'll rename it like one law, two law, three law, just so I know what element's happening. And I'll change the color as well. Uh, so that's just me. All my laws are the cyan color, then handhelds are red. Some companies use actual colored tape around the wireless. So you might communicate like, hey, red's on stage, uh, yellow's live. Um, 
Also communicate what's in play or out of play is common terminology. You're like, hey, these four presenters are going to stage on law of one, two, three, four, they're in play. This presenter just exited on law of five, they are out of play. That helps communicate with your A1. Again, talk with them on their preferences. There's also sometimes Q&A microphones that are run around not by you, but maybe some helpers with the client. So like, hey, RF seven and eight or handheld seven and eight are out in the room, be ready for those. And you and your A1 just pray to Dan Dugan, see if you can figure it out. Number 20, ask for a comm plan. I, I asked for this a little bit, uh, or I've talked about it a little bit earlier, but ask for any specifics on channel allocation, any point to points, meaning this person wants to talk directly to this person without a party line or any department or multiple people on it. Ask if people prefer latching versus non-latching, AKA can they hit the button and it stay on and hit it, turn it off, or do they have to press and hold it down? A common allocation, especially on a medium-sized show, is productions on everyone's channel one or channel A, and then their department is on channel B. So production over lighting, production over audio, production over video is common. Sometimes there's a dedicated stage manager channel. The size and complexity of the show will help dictate this plan, but just so you're familiar with common allocations for comm and channels. 21 is, uh, is two-wire comm is unbalanced. This is usually ran over XLR cable. So be mindful of running XLR cables that have comm in it next to cables with high EMI or electromagnetic interference. So this means power cables next to video walls, stuff that's gonna just spit trash and, and, and create noise on the channel. I've even seen some A2s. I saw, I saw Lele do this on this last show I did with him in DC, but he gaffed the cable up on the wall, ran it up away from the other equipment. So that's a, another way to eliminate noise. Number 22, home stretch here. Thanks for hanging in here. Clarify your backup plan with your A1. So if a wireless mic goes down or you uh, you lose audio for video or whatever it is, you're probably working more with the wireless, but uh, are you gonna have a backup in your pocket? That's also very common for an A2. Is be like, hey, we have 12 channels of wireless. We only need 10. I'm gonna have channel 11 in my pocket and the number 12 on the other side of the stage or something if you need it. So what is going to be your dedicated backup wireless? Let's say you lose the wireless rack entirely. I would advise you to have a wired, at least one wired 58 or handheld mic, uh, wired handheld microphone downstage center that you can put in your presenter's hand. And also make sure that it has about 50 foot of slack just in case they need to walk around. They're not just, you know, stuck to your reel rack with 10 feet of cable. So have about 50 foot of slack, a wired 58 and have that go into your handheld bus, the records everywhere, just to have it as an interim. Very helpful. Number 23, get familiar with the A1's console file and layout just in case you need to fill in, because you're gonna be next up just in case something happens. Uh, I got a good friend, Brian Maddox, was on a show and his stinking retina became detached while on site, now to go home, just crazy stuff happens. So make sure you are familiar enough with your console file and layout of the A1. If you need to step in there, maybe it's a really long, like two weeks of show and there you know not much back bathroom breaks you need to fill in, whatever. Just get comfortable with the A1 and their show file. Uh, won't take you much time. Number 24, help your A1 stay at the console. You're the one that's mobile. Uh, so don't just be a bump in a log backstage just sitting next to your wireless rack waiting for your next presenter. Be active and move uh, because unless your A1 has an, uh, an iPad, and usually with a lot of complicated cues, it's hard to mix on an iPad uh, or some type of tablet. Help them stay at the console. So if they're saying like, hey, someone needs to get mic'd up, that's your job. We need to fix something on stage, that's your job. You're mobile, be there. So give yourself a wireless compact if you can. <laughs> Number 25, I hate that I even have to say this, but label your cables, stay organized, and be the glue. Like I mentioned earlier, you're up, moving around, solving problems, thinking about the audio department mainly, but be a bro for a broette for video. Um, it's a very fluid role, the A2. Stage managing, managing RF, helping make sure the client is comfortable, helping allocate comm. So as the bigger and the bigger show gets, you may have a dedicated comm tech, and that's their specialty, a de dedicated RF coordinator. And the A2 might look more like just setting up and deploying everything and managing the wireless and the presenters. So just get clarity on that. In the bigger shows, they'll be a little bit more and more specialized, smaller, more and more general, and you'll be the catch-all. All right, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and learning a little bit more about what corporate world looks like. Let me know if you like this topic in general. It's a lot of fun. I have a ton of experience here and like sharing it. Um, I want to help you get amazing results on your show. I'll catch you next time.